Hey, girl. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you feeling? And, you know, I'm pumped up. I'm pumped up. Like, you know, the garden within, man. Been hearing some great raving reviews. How are you? Yeah. I mean, it, it got all in my business. I don't know about you, girl. It was, it was all <laughs> in my tea. It was all in my tea. So um, why don't you introduce yourself? And for those of you guys who are joining, if you want to comment, uh, we do have the ability to view the comments here. So feel free to comment and we'll take any questions or thoughts that you have. Um, so go on, Miss Bridget, introduce yourself. Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm Bridget LeRae. I'm author of the First 33 book series, One Woman's Journey from Trash to Treasure. I am a registered nurse and speaker, transformational life coach, all the things, all the things transformation. That's me. So who are you, ma'am? Oh, child. Um, so I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm Kara Sakina. I'm also a transformation strategist, uh, but we really like to focus on transformation from the inside out. I really have a heart for uh, faith-based business owners. So a lot of my content is around Christian lifestyle, uh, business, and your spirituality. So we're really excited to be here today. Amen. And oh, and then we did actually meet at a podcast summit. So I think it's only oh. right that we mentioned our podcast. <laughs> that part. So, so my podcast, as you see below, the Bridget LaRay show, where we showcase, highlight, and celebrate the accomplishments of dynamic artists. And yours. Yeah. So I actually have two. One is the Leaders Couch, which is on iTunes. Uh, that's where we have a lot of content about uh, di different um, aspects of leadership, um, how leaders really learn and love and uh, lead. And then uh, newly launched on YouTube is, you know, our uh, YouTube podcast. And we just completed season one on that. And we have a great series that's more spiritually based on personal development. But that's there. Yo, congratulations. Finishing season one. Season one, girl. We're getting ready to go to a whole new 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 thing. So tell hey. me why you thought we should review and discuss this book. The Garden Within. Okay, so I went to Woman Evolve Conference in mm -hmm. Dallas, Texas, and Dr. Anita Phillips took the stage. And she was there for one hour. Hmm. She talked to us about like as soon as she opened her mouth, I was just like, whatever this woman's saying. I knew it to be true. I didn't question it. I never heard of her in my life. She yeah. started talking about how how the, the neuron looks mm. the exact same as a plant seedling. Mm. And she put the picture up there and I was like, oh my God, that is so real. And as a nurse, I've studied, you know, the anatomy and physiology and all the things. And I said, that is so true. It looks the same. And she was talking about, she, she told us how our bodies is actually a garden and everything we, in our heart is the soil and everything that we plant in our heart is water and it grows. Mm -hmm. So when she was speaking and I had this ex where right? he used to always tell me feelings aren't facts. And I used to, I'm like, in my body, I, in, my, in my heart, I just knew I was like, but no, listen to me. Like my feelings are telling me something and you just would yeah. dismiss my feelings all the time. So when Dr. Anita said, you know, your, your feelings and your emotions is, is crucial to how your life ends up. Because thoughts become your your belief your, and your actions and your emotions become your words, the way you act, the way you go about in the world, and it becomes who you are. And I said, you know what? This is so true. I said I sent him, I sent him the book too. I was like, you know, you need to read this because Dr. Nita is talking about how emotions really do mean a lot. So I knew that everybody needed to read this book. And that it was going to be a life changer. It's going to change the way that we look at our feelings and our emotions. And and it was just going to change the world. And that's exactly what it's doing. Yeah. So why absolutely. did you why did you agree to read the book? Uh, well, you know, we had a great opportunity uh, to connect and um, just sharing with uh, you, you know, and for those of you that are familiar with me, uh, had the uh, loss of my mother this year. And mm -hmm. through that loss and through that trauma, I think especially when you look at women like Sarah, when you look at women like uh, Dr. Anita, women like ourselves who, you know, take a licking and keep on ticking, oftentimes we can let unresolved trauma unresolved issues and things just go because we kind of mm -hmm. feel like we're okay and we can move forward. We know it hurts, but we'll get over it. But I really loved how she began to discuss about those things. Um, I would call it maybe residue of the heart 
residue of the mind and how that impacts our bodies and our physical heart um, and how we perceive the world. Um, and I thought that was a powerful thing to explore. Yes. So, so in reading the book, did you find anything that was helpful for you? And like, cause you're still, I know it's been this year since your mom passed. So sorry to hear that in this book, like, is there anything in particular that stands out that has helped you? Oh, there's a, there's a lot of things as we shared them a little bit. I don't want to do too much of a deep dive into where we're going in our upcoming sessions on the book because there's some later chapters where she really gets into some practical mm -hmm. strategies to kind of help deal with it. Uh, but if we just focus on uh, the beginning parts of it, you know, when you see people like her, you know, oftentimes you, myself, we don't look like what we've been through. And yeah. to hear the beginning chapters about her, you know, being this faith believing household, very similar to mine. We didn't listen to nothing but gospel, like the, <laughs> the whole night. I could totally relate. Um, but also that there was a, you know, issues in the house. You know, there were issues in the house. And because we were, you know, so committed to our faith, my mother was in ministry, all the things. Um, especially back then, issues dealing with mental health or uh, abuse or things of that nature really weren't talked about. And if someone had an issue, all they really knew to do was to bring it to the Lord. So when yep, she opened right up and shared about, um, you know, have being violated, you know, I, I feel as though myself, along with a lot of other women, um, have had similar experiences in that you can look at her today and see that what has happened to you doesn't have to be who you are, you know? Yes, and I thought yeah. that really um, was touching to me about the beginning. Yeah, I think, you? yeah, like I've always had issues with just like expressing myself. I, I, I never felt like it was safe to express myself and, and just share the things that I was going through at the moment. I always felt like I needed to be strong, like, you know, suck it up. Like, you you want something to cry about? Let me, I'll give you. You want to cry about <laughs> Like, I can remember being, in, um, I think, about 13 when my grandmother passed away. And I was so out of touch with my feelings. And I remember going to the restroom and crying about it. And I was like, dang. And as I think about it now, as a, a 41-year-old adult, I'm like, man, how out of touch was I or how unsafe with just expressing myself and my feelings and my emotions was I that I just felt like I couldn't let anybody see me cry about the fact that my grandmother had passed away. And I and that's that wasn't that didn't stop at 13. It's something that I took with me into to life, into adulthood, where I just didn't feel safe with just expressing myself. So I think this book is very helpful and is, is useful to a lot of people that think tapping into your emotions is taboo like people don't want to hear that you're too emotional and things of that matter like no I, you know like tapping into your emotions show how strong you are because that takes it takes a lot for me it takes a lot for me to just be open and vulnerable you know dr Brene brown she was at the woman evolved as well conference um and she you know her whole thing is talking about how being vulnerable is courage it's not weakness so i, I looked at the vulnerability and expression my expressing my emotions as being weak and I didn't want to be weak so well you know as women and thank you for sharing that because as women you know that is where a lot of our femininity and our power is in you know our ability to tap into how we feel you know there's this whole masculine feminine energy thing going out in the in the in the mm -hmm. interwebs right um but what I really love is you know first everybody has both Right. And the mask yes. is when we're thinking, right? When we need to strategize when we're working as women, like that's what that's for. But the other parts of the time is what she's been talking about in this book is being able to tap into your body and understand does this feel right? You know, trusting yourself, trusting your body, trusting your feelings, knowing how to even get to that space in that place and then being able mm -hmm. to water your garden, as she says, from there, um, is just really going to be powerful and um, transformational for a lot of people. Yes, yes. And what I, what I love about the book is, like, she give us practical tools on how to get from one emotional uh, scale to the other. You know, I think 
the top, the top, like uh, when we're vibrating high with our emotions, I think that's like the joy, the love, the appreciation. I think that's like at the top. And I think the, the bottom is like when we are feeling, you know, feelings of, you know, jealousy, uh, grief, fear, things of that matter. So I think what we do, we try to, what we've been known to do, uh, what I've been known to do is just try to go from, you know, feeling the grief and all the way to joy without, without, with skipping those in between, those most emotions in between. So I think this book is going to be very helpful for those that, that don't know how to navigate their way from the bottom, like the low vibration to, to the top vibrations, like feeling the joy, the love, the happiness. So I'm excited for people to read this book, for, for us to read this book together yeah. and to continue to share stories and how it's helped us on our yeah. journeys, like week by week. Yeah. And you know what I also love is permission. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to speak from, you know, the, the church perspective, right? Permission. Mm -hmm. Come on, church. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> know right? <laughs> you know, but uh, often in ministry, you know, uh, we almost, I hate to say this, but I'm just going to say what I want to say. You know, you almost, right, you almost feel as though if you tell people how you really feel, if you get into, um the, the depths of it, and I'm not talking about a pity party, I'm talking about like, you know, transparency within yourself and maybe even sharing that with someone else, you feel like you're disappointing God, right? Mm. Or you make God look bad, you know, or yeah. maybe if, did you read T.D. Jake's book on faith? You, you know, like that's almost the culture where mm. with this book, what her and Sarah did was busted the doors wide open, right? To say, guess what? We have permission to feel this way. You have a right to feel this way. Now we're gonna give you some tools to get past it, but you, the doors of the church are open. You have yes. permission. Uh, to you have permission. <laughs> you know, and I think a lot of women, whether they admit it or not, and men need to know that it's okay. And you're not it's making okay. that look. It's all right. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. human. And, yeah, Dr. Anita said in the book, like how she used to feel like this badge of honor that she she was the cool calm collected one that she wasn't all emotional like other people and i was like girl i feel that i felt that 100 <laughs> because you look at other people like you know what uh -uh. like you you doing too much like you are doing yeah. way too much um you know what i just realized something excuse me sir i'm sorry hold on uh, are do you work here oh my god can you do me a favor i just realized i left my rings in the women's restroom can you have, can you ask somebody up there? You are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. I was just so watching my hair. real I'm live stream, everybody. <laughs> I'm like, you we are, my look, we, now, we didn't even say where you are. You're out of. Yes, I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles and I'm here yeah. at the New A house. It's a workspace that I'm, um, that I'm a member of and uh, it's a beautiful place and yeah, I just come here and do my thing. And you no. I, I am new to Dallas, uh, so I'm in my kitchen, uh, and <laughs> you know, I was just, I was just thinking about you know the, the the grace of technology and like how you said we met at a podcasting summit in the bathroom. Yes. So you said that about the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that full circle. <laughs> we literally met in the bathroom. <laughs> And I was in there tussling with my hair. <laughs> and she started talking, and we started talking, and we doing like we're doing now. And, uh -huh. you know, Sarah had opened up the forward about, you know, divine connections. Much love. Thank you. He got and, my rings. Uh, okay. You know, divine connections when you least expect it, when you're not looking for it. Oftentimes, as, you know, women in leadership are trying to do what we do. You know, the circle can get tight. It can get, you know, it can be hectic. But how she had been in her circle of influence, but not necessarily her sister. And I just thought how beautiful that was. And I thought about how when God is ready to take you to the next level in your life with partnership um, and, and things like that, he, when you're not even expecting it, he will do that. And I thought that was really beautiful Ooh. about the forward in the book. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, and I was on a live with Dr. Anita Phillips yeah. and Sarah Jakes Roberts, who who does yes. the Woman Evolve Conference, for those of you that don't know. And yes. one of the things- I know, I'm like, talking, everybody knows. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, everybody else. Like, yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that she was talking about um, was just, because you know, Sarah, Dr. Sarah Jakes Roberts has a book out as well. 
Yes. And the, uh, host, uh, had it, I have it right here in my audible. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So she she was talking about. She even said, "Listen, y'all. You know, y'all know I, I just um, launched my book as well." She said, "But if you got to choose between my book and the Garden Within," she said, "Choose the Garden Within." And I said, "Oh my God, the level of support and sisterhood and love that they have for each other." I said, "That is actually something that I've been praying for." You know, we got yes. I got friendships, of course. Yes, yeah. and I wanted a sister who we could do work together and still love yeah. on each other at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And at the end of the live, Sarah and Dr. Anita pray for that type of friendship over all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was like soon soon after you and I connected. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean. You know, I and, and we've talked about this privately, you know, but that's been my mm -hmm. prayer, you know, because yeah. um, and I'm just going to tell just a quick it's just a quick story. So right outside my balcony, they're building it's a construction and they're building like, um, I don't know, a high, I don't know if it's going to be a skyscraper. I don't know what it's going to be. But for the longest time, it just had one crane. It just had one crane and the crane was huge. So I was like, wow, they're doing a lot. The other day I go to look out the window and I see a second crane. And not only do I see a second crane, but now there's a whole nother sub building almost overnight. And it really spoke to me about the power of partnership. And sometimes mm. you can only get to a certain point until you allow that other crane or that other person to be Ooh. able to, take, to, to go to the next level of what God has purposed you to do. So I just wanted to insert that nugget since we were talking about the power partnership. Wow, that's that's really deep. That's really deep. And and I do realize a lot of the things that I've been working on, it has been because um and I hadn't really excelled in it. It's because I've been trying to, to go and do it on my own. So that's what I love about this book because it, it taps into our emotions. And I think I've I've been emotional in the sense where my ego has been so big. And with my ego being that big, I had I wasn't expressing the things that I was feeling when when trying to partner with someone else, it was just like, you know, I would just shut down. Like, you know what? Okay. If, it, if it's not working, then that's just what it does. It right. just ain't working, right. Right. you know? And now that I'm working on, you know, speaking my truth and, and allowing my, my feelings and emotions to be seen and heard, you know, I'm, I'm attracting partnerships with people. So mm. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you, Kara. <laughs> well, I appreciate you too, Bridget. I know that today, was really just our entry point and just yes. kind of getting this together. Um, uh, we're going to be sending out the replay links. Well, it should be on everybody on all the on our socials. But I know for those of you that signed up, a lot of people were working, you know, going live. It's not always the best time, but I still think it's the best way to mm -hmm. get things across. And as we get traction, uh, so we'll be putting out more information over next yeah. week on different ways that the group can collect through different tools and collaborate. I know there were some items that you talked about us utilizing. You know, we're just beginning. Next week, we're going to get into, you know, really dig into the chapters one, two, and three, right? Um, yes. And she keeps talking up her book, y'all. I got the book. It's my audible. It's my audible, y'all. You know what I'm saying? She keeps, you know, she keeps bringing the, I got the book, Okay. Uh, <laughs> long as long as one of us is showing it, you know, yes, it's yes, 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 no. is, is here. Yes. Girl, the people they know I'm a full job, you know. <laughs> if I ain't laughing, it's something wrong. Okay. Well, um, I need to get the audible myself so I can get it, I can get it audibly and you know, visually. So me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually about to the physical book now because after listening to the audible, I'm retaining mm -hmm. it. And I want to write down stuff and you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like really kind of break it out. So in the oh, last but let me show y'all real quick. Let me show y'all real quick. So I told y'all I'm I got the um the honor of meeting Dr. Anita Phillips at the Woman Evolve, and she actually signed okay. it for me. Oh, wait. That's just for her to know how to spell my name. But yeah, she signed it for me. That was, oh, that was so sweet. So yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> and I think you have a picture with her, too. I do. I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll post so it. You guys want to see the, so, uh, the picture of her? I think it's on her socials on Instagram um, mm -hmm. at the Bridget Loray Show. Yes, yes. Right? And also Oprah. Oprah also got on top of this book too. So we so you know she, it was on Oprah's desk and she picked it up, started reading it. So it's gonna it may be on Oprah's book club soon. Hey, so everybody that's watching, 
we already up on well, it. Before we, didn't even, we didn't even, we was just so trying to get started with this. Like, I, I agree with you. I say, you know, let's tag, let's hashtag it or hashtag together. So people who need this information, who might not listen to Oprah, who might not, right. listen, you know, they might not be able to relate, right? But they might look mm -hmm. at you or they might look at me and be like, you know what? I can relate to that. You know what? Right. Wow. Yeah. I would have never thought that they went through those things, you know, as you were mm -hmm. sharing your vulnerability and things of that nature. So I'm excited. I see different people coming in and out of here, um, but we'll have up the thing that's, the, you know, be forcing out on the comments. But anything, you know, I know we want to keep this around 20 minutes or so. Any last closing thoughts that um, you want to share? Yeah, I just want to tell everybody, listen, don't let anybody tell you that you're too much, that, you know, you're not enough. Don't let anybody deter you from following your dreams or make you feel. Actually, let me let me backtrack. Nobody can make you feel any certain way. It's what you think about the, the things that they say, the things that they do that have you feel in a certain way. Only you can feel a certain way. Only you can make yourself feel a certain way. So, you know, go after your dream. Believe in yourself, like for real. Believe in yourself because if you're not where you want to be, nine times out of 10, it's because of your unbelief. So feel the love that God has for you. Believe in yourself and go after everything that you, you want in life. If you don't know how to do it, tap into this book. Learn how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's beautifully stated. Uh, the only thing I would say is allow yourself to change yourself. The things you did, the strategies, what you had to do to get to this point, they've served you well to get to this point. But to get to all God has you to be, to get to the next level, to get to become your best self, to even maybe even discover who you really are. You might have to abandon some of those practices. You might have to change your perspective and tap into some new ways and how to navigate this thing we call life. So we hope that we can support you in that. Uh, that's why we have Club Create um, because we're hoping that together we can become a club to help us create a life um, that we love. And so yes. that being said, we any, any, any last call. <laughs> <laughs> That's from, you heard that, guys, from your change concierge right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm just honored to partner with you in this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. You know, for me, it's never about the number. It's one or one million. It's one or one million. I believe you show up the same, you serve the same, you give the same, you love the same. One or one million. And if yes. one person comes across this and their life is touched by what you've shared or they decide to get the book or something else that honey we did we did what we were supposed to do we did it you know we, we're okay. being obedient we're being obedient look, look, you know to start <laughs> yes yes so um just so, so they can know who we are like we are we are um you know lovers of god and we do pray so you want to pray us up out of here oh okay all right ma'am now i'm gonna if be you, if you want to <laughs> um, no, I, well, you know, I believe in prayer and especially when you yes. talk about things of the heart and the spirit and the mind. So Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for every single person that will come across this live stream. We thank you for Bridget, Father God. We thank you for the ministry and the purpose and the business you have placed in her heart, God. Lord, I ask you even now, spirit of the living God, to touch every broken heart, touch every broken mind. Reveal to them who you've called them to be. Give them the courage and the strength to tap into something new, to let them know that you that have begun a good work in them is faithful to complete it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A powerful Amen. prayer. Prayer warrior. Yes. <laughs> Girl, Amen. listen. You know, people say, I had to pray. Okay. If I didn't pray, I wasn't going to make it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And we will see you guys next week, okay. 12 p.m. Um, Pacific time. You're yes. central, so that's 2 p.m. your time, 3 p.m. Yes. Eastern. Yes, can't wait. All right, have a blessed day. Thank you, you too.